This is Colin McGarry, The Walking D Day. Now we're walking D Day, but for a change, we're not in Normandy, we're in the Alps. Now, this video is going to be based on the Mackey in the Verdon region, and especially about Henry Utine, one of the Mackey's Arb. Henry Utine passed his youth at Vesu in Haute-Saône. When the war started, he joined the army and passed the saint cyr Officers Academy test. That's the equivalent of West Point. After the armistice, he was moved to Aix-en-Provence in the Free Zone. He went over to the resistance when Germany occupied the south of France. He led a grenade attack against a hotel full of German officers in St Etienne in March 43. In April, he organised the escape of 26 prisoners in Puy. He was arrested in May and then he gave himself a self-inflicted wound to get into hospital. But because he fought with a pro petonist medic, he was sent back to prison. And there he helped 26 prisoners escape. He was then sent to organise a frontier around Marseille and then moved to the Lower Alps where we are now, near Castellan. There's a report in the FTP records, without any date. It says that Henry Utine dressed as a German officer and he went into the hospital at Barcelonette and helped many wounded prisoners escape. So on the 3rd of June, 1944, Utine was at Saint-Pierre, just south of Puget Tenier. Two Vichy militia came to requisition supplies from the farmers. They were captured, tried and sentenced to death. The population were collected in the town centre and informed of the sentence. At 7.30pm the two militia were executed. With this group of Makizar, they left the village in two commandeered buses to go towards Rouen. Utene then received a message informing him that the Gestapo from Dean would be going to Nice along this road on the 6th of June and they were to attack them. So Pierre Utine chose this pass called Tout Or for the site of the ambush. Paul Saliver was on the eastern side of the pass towards Rouen with a group of men. They had machine guns, grenades, rifles. They were on an overhang looking down onto the road. The Germans would be approaching from the western side, from Vergon. Houtine was there with another group and a machine gun as well, covering the road. The wait was long and Salivaux was nodding off. They didn't hear any vehicles coming, but suddenly there was a sound of gunfire and grenades. A car appeared over the summit of the pass and stopped near Salivaux. He leant against a tree and fired his sten, but it jammed. One of the German officers fired at him. He could hear the bullets passing. Paolo threw a grenade onto the road, and the three Germans disappeared into the brush down the steep slope. Houtene and the others came running over the crest of the pass. They're down there, he shouted. So they were throwing grenades down to the slope into the branches. Houtene was trying to get the German's car started. The other car had crashed with the three dead German officers in it. One of them was the head of the SD at Dean, Ernst Wolfram. The Makizars took everything they could use, including uniforms, binoculars and documents. Then they doused the car with petrol and set fire to it. They now set off to Vergron. The inhabitants ran out to meet them, calling out that the Allies had landed in Normandy. They were overjoyed. No need to hide in the woods now. This idea was of course a bit premature. So they carried on to saint julien de verdon singing as they went. They had lunch at saint julien And after lunch, the locals helped them set up a roadblock on the junction between the road to Nice, Castellan and Dean. The first vehicle to come along was from Castellan. 
had two policemen in it and they readily gave themselves up to the Maquisard. Shortly afterwards an ambulance and a German truck came from Castellan. Now they fired on it with a machine gun. But then a convoy came from the direction of the north from St André des Alpes. And now the machine gun was facing the wrong way. So although they were all firing at these Germans, they had to pull out and climb the mountains towards Allons. After they left, the locals witnessed that the Germans coming from St André and the Germans coming from Castellan fired on each other, causing several casualties. In the afternoon, a group of Germans arrived at Vergon. The mayor's brother tried to escape and was shot. Six people were arrested. As Sir Julien de Verdon, the mayor was arrested and deported. Now, during the war, some people tried to keep a semblance of normality. As a Madame Hoffman, she brought her mother and her children from Nice to this hotel, which is called the Alp Hotel, for a few days of peace. They arrived on the 1st of June, and on the 6th of June, a bunch of dishevelled and some wounded Maquisards turned up. Their leader, who was Henry Houtinet, he asked if there was a doctor in the house. Now she was a nurse, so the task of um, treating the men fell on her. So the hotel was turned into a hospital. Now the hotel owner wasn't at all pleased about that. He said they're taking a risk, but she said we haven't got any choice and we'll treat the Germans as well. The fighting around St André Les Alpes carried on a few days. The Maquisards held off a column of Germans of 80 soldiers and there were three Germans killed and two taken prisoner. Now two German soldiers got off the Pien train which goes from Dean to Nice and they were arrested and they were going to be executed at St André Les Alpes but then been searched properly and one of them set off a grenade which wounded some Maquisard so they were shot just then. A Gestapo agent was arrested and executed at Castellan. On the 9th of June, Henry Houtinet set up his headquarters in the Alp Hotel here. It used to be quite a smart hotel. It's been completely abandoned, although it's lived in by some people. Now the German authorities weren't going to take all this without reacting. They decided to execute as many civilians as German soldiers had been killed. But as the road from Dean towards Castellan was too dangerous for them, they told the authorities at Nice to choose 11 prisoners and take them out to be executed. So a truck left Nice with 13 prisoners in. Five of them were just adolescents. Now when they got near Kras, the truck stopped, two men were taken out and shot and then the truck carried on. One of the prisoners said to the German officer, he said, you're going to shoot us, aren't you? He said, no, your punishment will be to get back on foot. And the truck carried on. They went on for hours, some hours, and then it stopped near Castillon, which doesn't exist anymore. It's under the lake. And then they got the prisoners out, and handcuffed them and they said you're free to go. So they all spread out across the field in different directions but then the German machine guns barked and they were cut down. Then the Germans advanced and made sure that any that were still moving were finished off. But the two of them who were still alive they had the presence of mind to stay dead still and then the Germans left. Now a few hours later, the farmer who just the day before cut the hay in that field came to see if the hay was drying, found with horror the 11 bodies and then saw two of them were still alive. He ran off to Saint-Julien de Verdun to get help. 
and the villagers took the, all the bodies and the two wounded men to the cemetery at St Julia. The priest, Abbey Inyard, he rode right off to Castellan on his bike to get a doctor. Now one of the wounded men died a few hours later and the other one died the next morning. So they're all buried in the cemetery at St Andre. Now when the Germans found out that all the bodies had been moved, they came to Saint Julien and they were threatening to shoot the priest because they said they should have left them there as a warning to what happened to people that stood up against the Germans. But the priest brazened them out. The German officers nearly shot him twice, but then gave up. But they made the people abandon the village. They said they were going to set fire to the village. Now they searched all the houses, didn't find anything incriminating, but they didn't burn the village down. Now this monument near Saint Julien was put up in 1945. It's in the shape of the Cross of Lorraine. Now on the 5th of July, Henri Outinet was returning from a mission on the motorbike with Laurent Doll, and they were just got up to the pass of Lech and they ran into a German column and they were both killed. His funeral was held at Beauvaisere, which had become his headquarters, in the presence of Captain Lecouillet, the regional head of the resistance. And after the liberation, this square became known as Place Captain Jean-Louis, which was Henri Utinet's name for um, as a Mackey. Castellan was liberated on the 17th of August 1944 by American troops.